strut on through distant pens. Water on my wings with not a note of holy in your voice. Skirt of flames dances around her at best. High and witness, yes, Lord, yes. You all, you and you and you and you. Alienated strangers, rabid races, battered It takes a long time for the light to magically burst into form. We need the compassion of a poetry of impulse. Poetry for black people has always been about memory, about fingering the jagged grain of pain and overcoming it. At its roots, poetry is like the beating of the drum. It carries the song long after the historical fact has been muted. Through poetry flows the continuity that defines African-American culture and tradition. And there is an urgency in the voices of contemporary black poets to map the geographies of the soul. The reason that I delved and, and, and did a, a backwards flip into poetry has mm. everything to do with black folks nudging me, nurturing me along that w with that everything that has to do with writing and reading and education. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that my love of poetry fought off everything else that was around me. Right. Um, so it also has to do with there were no poets there were no official poets in my community, but there were poets everywhere. Mm -hmm. In the, in the um, pulpit, in the classroom, um, English teachers who adored poetry and taught it from that perspective and from that vista point, um, they were my models. Mm -hmm. And when I got old enough and I was at um, Talladega College, um, HBCU in the, in the mid-70s, late-70s, I met Nikki Giovanni, and this is a great story. I mean, I don't have, I don't think there are a lot of um, turning points, but this is a huge turning point. She came to uh, Talladega College for the Arts Festival, and I was, uh, my job was to drive the van. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the student, student service job. Mm -hmm. And I had tucked my poems under the car seat, but I was too shy to bring them out when I picked her up. So she stayed a couple of days, and everybody was like, would you please give her the poems? This is, gonna, this is a really important moment. I said, well, it's one thing to grow up in a, high, in a high school and give your poems to your English teacher, and you get feedback. It's quite another to give them to the Nikki Giovanni. Mm -hmm. and, but we were going to Birmingham, and I finally said, in a rush of about you know, 800 words in two minutes, here's my packet of poems. Da -da 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 -da. Maybe, she, you know, and I thought this was a foolish thing. I'll never hear from her. The next week, she called the dorm. Mm -hmm. she, the call went out on the hall. I'll never forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Nikki Finney, Nikki Giovanni wants you. And everybody's head popped out of the door. Mm -hmm. They were like, what? Right. No, there's no way. And I was like, stop fooling me. You all are always playing on it. And this was before cell phones. So we're talking about the old wooden right. mm -hmm. phone boots. So I saunter down to get this trick call that I think is waiting on me, and it's her. Mm. And she says, I've packaged back up your poetry. Um, there's a lot of red marks on it. Oh, wow. And she said, now, don't be afraid of the red marks. Right. I fell in love with the color red from mm -hmm, that moment mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. I got them back. I could hardly read what I had written for her m marking. Later, I found out the story gets better. Nikki Giovanni's mother was an English teacher, and she and Nikki sat at their kitchen table with two red oh. pens and marked that manuscript of 20 poems up and sent them back to me and uh, said, you know, underneath all that red is something good trying to happen. Mm. So I just, I never looked back after that.